Hello, I'm Malcolm Haslett. We all love living, but we're about to have a frank and open discussion about the new legislation in SA, which has been law in Victoria for some time now, about voluntary assisted dying. Next on Our Time. Hello and welcome to Our Time. It's with great pleasure we welcome back to the program Lainey Anderson. Hello. Hi, Malcolm. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's lovely to see you again, this time not talking about aeroplanes. No, my other obsession. Yes. Indeed. And also Anne Bunning, who's also joining us, and we'll explain who you are in a tick because I have a burning question to start the program. Nothing about the subject. Yes. It's just I know, about I know exactly the Vickers Vimy. About. Yes, I know. Now, I had no idea when we talked last what the Vickers Vimy meant. But you've just explained it to me, so please explain it again. So Vickers Vimy was the amazing aircraft flown by Ross and Keith Smith mm -hmm. with their mechanics, Wally Shires and Jim Bennett, across the world from and England to Australia. And you wrote a book and studied in all, 1919. through the trip yourself. Exactly. And the Vickers Vimy out at the airport. Vickers, this is the Adelaide Airport. At Adelaide Airport. Vickers is named after the Vickers Aviation Company. And so all, they made it. They made it and it was coming just off the production line when the armistice was announced in 1918. But all of their aircraft took V for the first letter. So it was called the Vickers Vimy, obviously probably from Vimy Ridge, I suppose. Oh, it could have been the Vickers the Veranda. Of, or Vegemite, or well, yes, in that logic, been, if it had been one day, yes, it yeah. may, it may have been, but no, it, may, it never got to that. The Vickers Vegemite, see, that's a good ring to it. <laughs> but it's going for to be, Australia, might be. I know, but how fantastic that by the end of this year, it will be in its new home at Adelaide Airport in yes. the new terminal. Which that's is fantastic. the big news. That's yeah. the big news. Yeah. And speaking of a new home. So what's happened in South Australia has sort of been rather late in coming, hasn't it? Because Victoria has had a voluntary assisted dying law for how long? So voluntary assisted dying has been law in Victoria now for just on two years. And the yeah. rest of Australia? So it's been, um, it's been passed, the legislation has been passed in WA and in Tasmania, and it's just coming into effect, Dan, in WA. On the 1st of July it came in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, now, so how did you both that? become involved in uh, helping this bill to finally pass through local government? Well, I'll let Anne start because she's been involved for longer than me. I started when Steph Key, who's one of the MPs who introduced a number of the 17 bills that South Australia's had, I was working with her and so I continued on after she stopped. So we did about three bills together and then I've done uh, this last one since As then. a volunteer? Yes, yeah. Well, I now I am. Originally I wasn't, but I have been. Right, but I think that's really important because if somebody volunteers to do something and follow it through, it means that you believe in it very strongly. Yes, it was about time. I mean, we've, we've just heard so many awful stories of what's happened to people. And it, and it just needed to happen. Other, you know, one in five Americans have access to this sort of legislation, so mm -hmm. what's wrong with South Australia? Yeah. And it, I should, I really want to say just how amazing the team are at Voluntary Assisted Dying South Australia, Malcolm, because the group, it started off as SAVE, so SA Voluntary um, Euthanasia Society, but um, those volunteers, I mean, sometimes, it, it, when it's right at its peak, it's almost a full-time job volunteering like this. And mm. Anne and Frances Coombe, who is the um, mm. president, and Julia, um, who's the vice president, and all the gang, these people have worked tirelessly for decades to make this happen for the people of South Australia. Well, so I suppose huge the, kudos. the most obvious question to ask is why? Why is it so important to have a bill like this going through legislation? Well, 80% of South Australians overwhelmingly throughout the years have wanted access to voluntary assisted dying. And for how long has this been since the bill was introduced? Was that in 2014, did you say? When the bill was introduced. First, when the first of these bills. No, 93. 90, in 93. 93, yes. Oh, that long? Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, so yes. it's been 26 years Lucky since that the... it wasn't too quick. Yes. Yeah. No, not, not yeah, rushed. so, but... 
The, the fantastic thing about, I think, and one of the main reasons we had success this time was that South Australia wasn't going to be the first. So every other time, it's South Australia has been leading the rest of the nation with it. And this time, I think MPs were reassured by the fact that it has, we've already seen it in place in Victoria. So we had a, a, a model to really look at and for, for MPs to be reassured. So, but I mean, I think it's, it's almost self-evident why we need this. Mm. People deserve when they are, and there are so many safeguards, Malcolm. So we've got 70 safeguards with the- well, This is the bill, isn't it? Yeah. It's yep. not exactly a small document. No. And, and it's double-sided. Yeah, and nor should it be, of course. Of course. Because, so the safeguards, and for people who don't, um, haven't followed it closely, there are, there are lots of safeguards. So you, you must be over 18, you must be of sound mind, you must um, approach your doctor about it, doctors can't approach you, um, raise the issue. Um, you must be diagnosed with only six months left to live mm. um, in most circumstances, so if you have cancer, etc., or 12 months with a neurodegenerative disease. Um, you, Before it's too late to make up your mind. Exactly. So um, being depressed or having a mental illness is not a criteria for eligibility, nor is um, a disability. So, And there's so many other criteria. So when people are facing interminable pain at the very end of their life, they have a choice whether to die in pain or whether to access voluntary assisted dying and take back some control. And that's why, me, that's why I have been fighting for this for over a decade. And I'm, I'm sure it's why lots of people like Anne have well, been Anne, fighting for it as well. And what's your story with the connection? Um, well, I, I think that the stories that I've heard that for people who are in palliative care, everybody who uses this is going to be in palliative care already. Mm. And for 5 or 10% of cases who are in palliative care, palliative care can't relieve their symptoms. They're just going to have to suffer, full stop. And Andrew Suffer Denton, is the word, isn't it? It is. I've, been, I've seen this. I've seen, I'm, I'm sure everybody really in the world has seen this if you're of a certain age. Because yeah. grandparents, it's often with grandparents, mm. but it can be with children who are so young, you know, that clearly they're not going, they're not going to survive. Yeah, you do have to be over 18 with this because you have to give informed consent. That's children consent. to me. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah true. Okay. true. True, true, Yes. And yes. Um, a, a fantastic result of this in other areas, in other jurisdictions, has also been that funding for palliative care has increased. Sometimes it's seen that it's an argument about whether you support voluntary assisted dying or you support palliative care. My dad had the most amazing palliative care here in South Australia, mm. but if he'd had his choice back in 2009, he most definitely would have taken voluntary assisted dying as well because he didn't want those last weeks of his life. No matter how good the palliative care was, he still wanted control. He still didn't want his body to waste away mm. to nothing and not be able to eat. You know, and that's my dad went through exactly the yeah. same. That, so, that's the whole point when uh, joking about children. But mm. frankly, it doesn't really mean a lot to you until you see people who yes. are in yeah. that older part of life. Yes, and but, I've certainly seen it with people close to me. So I, I understand it completely. I think a fundamental, another fundamental reason why the legislation was successful this time, and why lots of politicians in South Australia, to their credit, put aside their own objections to this and voted with the overwhelming majority of their constituents was because people really did pour out their hearts to MPs. Well, it's um, like Andrew Denton yeah. is leading the charge. Oh, and Andrew, he deserves, you know, the Australian of the Year for the role he's taken. He's really taken on the grief of the nation, I think to make this story heard and to get people to start sharing their stories. He's had a really profound impact on making this happen for the people of um, Australia. So, but yeah, we, yeah. And we... Most of the people have cancer. That's where 80% of the cases are people who have cancer all around the world. It's really consistent around, those, around that area. And, and they're the people whose suffering just continues and continues and they can't When the do pain anything. never ends. Yes. My mum went mm. through that. Yes. The pain just never ended. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And it's not, it's just, 
we shouldn't have to do that when there's no future, there's nothing you can do and you're just going to suffer. Well, yes, there is now. Well, first of all, there, there is nothing choice. we can do to live forever yes. to start with. Yes. So consequently, it's something that we all have to come to terms with. At mm. some point in our life, we realise, oh, apart from me, this isn't going to go on forever. You know, yeah. we all wish that we could. Yes. But then there comes a time when our bodies just don't work anymore. We're not yeah. made to last forever. Yes. Yeah. So that... So um, in a minute after the break, we'll come back and we'll just talk about what the process is, just for people who haven't picked it up from news services, because in a long-form interview like this, at least we've got the time to talk about exactly what it means. Yeah, fabulous. And we'll be back to do exactly that in just a moment. Our guests on this episode of Our Time are Lainey Anderson and Anne Bunning. And... Um, we were just talking before the break about the process of this. Now, the bill coming into uh, actually being passed has taken what, nearly 30 years? 25, yes, yes. And it took so long because of what, objection? Uh, there were mainly religious-based objections mm -hmm. and they were very organised, principally the Catholic Church. So... Uh, Globally, this has happened as well, mm -hmm. but they just bring up objections for no particular reason because with the stuff that we've, the research that we've done, we know that 75% of Catholics support voluntary assisted dying. So, and it's 75, 80% for a lot of religions and a lot, and most people around the world. So, it's massively popular. But, but also, it's it. The point needs to be made that. The doctrine of the, all the world religions are so old. People didn't live so long. We didn't have the assistance to live longer. We didn't have the drug yes. therapy. We didn't have any of these things. So the purpose for a lot of the doctrine is really outdated. Well, you can be kept alive for a lot longer, of course. as you're saying. And that's part of the difficulty because for some people, they... They don't, they're not sure what the outcome's going to be and they're kept alive for no particular reason. The, the family might might feel that they don't want to say no, so there's mm. drugs that can be used and they, they can be kept alive for a long time, not knowing what the next stage is going to be. Mm. Yeah. I, I think the significant thing about this legislation, Malcolm, is that the res rights and views of everyone are respected. So of paramount importance is the um, rights of the individual to speak to their doctor, but doctors have a right to conscientiously object. And in South Australia, it's been legislated that institutions can conscientiously object as well. So um, like a in church institution, uh, if they don't yeah, agree? In a hospital setting. In a hospital setting, right. Yes, but in aged care homes... Um, owned by religious institutions, the rights of the individual do take precedence again. So, and, and it's voluntary. Like if you don't, if, if for some reason, again, for whatever reason, you don't believe in this, that's absolutely your right. But mm. hallelujah that now the overwhelming majority of people who do want access to voluntary assisted dying, their rights have won out, which, mm. yeah, is... It's you so use good a religious for word then, hallelujah. Well, I think, well, it is, it is hallelujah, isn't it? <laughs> hallelujah after 26 <laughs> yeah. years. But, but uh, the point is that a lot of the churches that were against it have now changed their logic towards this. Not really. No? Um, no, the Catholic Church is still adamant that they are not, not prepared to support it. Yeah, but, but they don't then... accept homosexuality or any of the things that we now know are just part of life. But it's the hierarchy of the church. Well, not, they need to move the, on. Yes. It's our, and most others are silent on the issue and let, just let it up, you know, let individuals... Um, but there are so many yes. steps, so many steps that you have to go through. It's not like you can just wander into your doctor and say, and so, oh, I think I've had enough now. I'll end it now. There are steps after steps after steps and mm. assessments, assessments, assess, assessments, forms, checking, a whole lot of things. That it's it, That's why there's such a big... A big act Such a big bill, to deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Well, it's it's good to know that we don't have to go through that at the end of life, that we have seen family and friends go through. And no doubt you've seen the same as I've seen mm. and no doubt you've seen the same as we've mm. seen. 
and it just it just breaks your heart. Everybody says the same thing. Oh, it breaks my heart to see them in this condition. If you know, if only they could go. I remember thinking, watching my dad slowly uh, disappear is the best way to put it. And he would say to mm. me quite frequently, "I never thought the end would be like this." And he was quite a religious man, but we had both been with my mother as she passed, knowing that the morphine that the doctor had given was going to help her close down, yes. as he so yes. amply put it. Yes. And you, you realise that we have the ability to make the end not unpleasant. Mm. And, you know, it may be 40 people a year that use this when it's fully going, when you see what's happening in other states and around the world. So it's not a lot of people, but it will give a lot of other people peace of mind. Peace of mind, yes. Knowing mm. that there is this... Option but the statistics the are end. that of, you were telling me how many people in Victoria have applied for this but haven't used it? Hundreds, I think it's over 400 have actually um, applied and been found um, able to Abraham, access it. Yeah. Um, but about 30% uh, never use it because they just, a, a lot of people just want to know it's in the cupboard yes. and it's there and it's a form of control. Yeah. And for others, they've had a glass of champagne with friends and they've said goodbye because they just don't want to live in pain anymore. And I mean, mm. it, it's people wanting to die how they've lived and that is surrounded by loved ones and in control. And, and that is a beautiful thing. So the other way to put it is also that if we're the relatives or the loved ones, and if we don't let them do this, we're the selfish ones. Well, interestingly, um, Betty King, who is a, a former Supreme Court Justice in Victoria, mm -hmm. and she's the head of the Victorian Review Board, she said that um, they, she's been looking for signs of coercion, you know, um, vulnerable people being coerced, and she said the opposite is true, mm. whereby family members try and Same convince, no. please don't do it, but... Um, ultimately say, yes, we know that you're in, in too much pain and we're just going to have to let you go. So. And it's up to the person, yes. yeah. nobody else. And there's witnesses and all sorts of systems that are inbuilt into it and review and monitoring of every aspect of this thing that yeah. the possibility of, of something going wrong is, is, is pretty limited and around the world the same. So... So it's a, it's a very safe system and well safeguarded, and, but gives people confidence. And what they find is people actually live longer now because they know they've got the choice. Like yeah. two, people, two people a month kill themselves by suicide because they don't, in South Australia, because they don't have this choice. And the police or a relative or someone finds them. Yeah. And, and that's the stats that the police have provided. Someone well, with a terminal illness to, yes. a, to a month. I mean, there's a bit of a parallel here with the coronavirus um, issues that have been going on in the world with misinformation being given that isn't relevant to the actual issues that at hand, yes. like with the inoculation and so on. Um, it's finding out the truth as opposed mm. to finding out opinions. I have to say, having been sort of right with Anne and, and all the uh, VADSA team, right at the forefront of this one though, the debate this time around was really constructive from mm. all sides. It was bipartisan support, um, you know, with um, Kayan Ma um, as um, the opposition attorney general co-sponsoring the bill with Susan Close. But um, Stephen Wade as health minister was incredibly constructive in the upper house. And the vast majority of both Houses of Parliament supported it and wanted to be really constructive in making sure the vulnerable were protected while the rights of 80% of people that want this legislation were, were put into place. So it, it was just, it was a, a very good example of mm. Parliament working for us in this case, I think. Yeah. So and two, two sorry, two thirds of the upper house voted for it and 33 in the lower house voted for it, 11 voted against. So it was an overwhelming majority. It was a conscience vote in the end, yes. wasn't it? Yes, yeah. one by one each MP. So it was an overwhelming majority, not right. you know, yeah. just getting through. So, think, Anne, yeah. in your life, do you feel you would make that choice? I would, dep depending you know, what, what prognosis happens. I have with something. I mean, 80% of people have cancer, and for those people 
whose symptoms can't be relieved at the end of life, they now have that choice. Well, it's because we're living longer, though. Yeah, That's the yes, point. Yes, there's the more three score years and ten have certainly been exceeded by at least another mm. 20 for most people, it yes. seems. There's yeah. more treatments available so mm. you can extend your life. But if, you know, there's no quality of life and it is your choice. I mean, you have to be near near the end of your life and there's no options of treatments that you consider reasonable. So there's a whole lot of qualifications. You can't just wander in, as I said. So yeah, I, I would use it, yes. But the point is you're not committing a sin as, as the church would perhaps see it, because we're going to pass anyway. Yes. And the fact that we've been often artificially kept alive longer, where is the sin? Yes. Is it in keeping you artificially alive longer mm. yes. is the question. Yes. Well, to me, it would be the question. Yes. Um, Lainey, same question for you. Do you feel that if the time came, you'd make that choice? I'd have a lovely glass of champagne I'd toast all of my loved ones and tell them how much I love them and then very happily say goodbye, yes. And go to sleep. Most definitely, yes. My dear friend Phil Skinner, who I've talked about on this program quite often and she was a guest several times, passed away a year ago on her birthday, on her 98th birthday, and she used to say to me um, prior to, while she was still sort of capable, she used to say, I just want to go to sleep and not wake up. Because yeah. mm. I can't do anything anymore. I just lay in this bed. I can't do anything anymore. And I, it, as hard as it was for me to understand that feeling, mm. in the end she taught me to understand that feeling. And perhaps the secret of this is we need to talk about it more often, obviously, in families about mm. end of life for mm. what you want. Absolutely, yeah. We, we'd, we would encourage anyone to take out an advanced care directive, completely, obviously, very separate to this, but, yeah, and talk about it. And that's what the great thing about this is. These, they, they spark conversations with your doctor that end in yes. better palliative care and hopefully a, a better a choice and control at the end of life for people. And we'll be back in a minute to talk a little more. Our special guests, Elaine Anderson and Anne Bunning. And where do the police stand in this situation? Well, interestingly, the police supported the introduction of this legislation. They made a submission to the Joint Parliamentary Inquiry in support because their young staff, constables, attend suicides of people who could see no way out and have died terribly and their young mm. staff have to attend. So they they estimated two a month um, when they went through must be so their difficult. records. Awful. Yes. And that actually played a huge role in reassuring MPs that this was the right way to go this time and, and that this legislation's time had arrived. So we're very grateful to SAPOL for that. Is this just, do you think, an evolution in the understanding of life in humankind? that well, we would come to a bill like this? Well, we don't talk about death in our society, no, we do we? It's hidden away it somewhere. Is. far too much. And this does allow mm. people to talk about it because if they're going to... They, they usually want to engage with their family, so they talk to their family about what their yeah. end-of-life choice, what they want, and it's, it's a much more open and informed discussion now. The policy we should all have, really, is make every day count. Yes. Even the last day. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the fact that we will soon, uh, South Australians will be able to die with dignity, I think is, is such a great thing. Anywhere in the world, thank you so much to both of you. A, an interesting and difficult subject on one hand, but one we just need to be comfortable to talk about. Uh, so until next time, when we'll comfortably talk about something completely different, keep yourself nice till then. Bye. We'll just go on talking as if we're just talking. Excellent. Because and usually, here we are. We're just chatting. So I like your bracelet. It's nice. arthritis. Oh, does it and work? And it works. Really? It, it's magnetic stone. Oh. I've been trying to buy it's some like more. Iron, online. is it? Or? Yeah, it's.